It's Saturday, the 6th of July. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. Fresh back from another uneventful Sydney cross-country flight in the Boeing 777. Come back home uh, to a record heat wave here in Northern California and Nevada. And of course, my in-basket is overflowing. But at first, I want to tackle this apparent forced landing of a Aero Commander on Highway 50 near Carson City, Nevada. And I got some secondhand information from the pilot owner who performed this forced landing to share with you today. So here's what we know so far. And in a text from the owner himself, the important lesson to learn here is always take off with full tanks and don't trust your fuel gauges. And it's why I always say in the Cessna 310, the most important gauge on the instrument panel is the analog wind up watch to always know exactly how long we've been flying and to keep track of our fuel burn. Starting first with the Aviation Safety Network, Friday the 5th of July, Aero Commander 500A, a 1961 model, three folks on board near Dayton, Nevada, Departure Airport, Silver Springs, Carson City Airport as the destination airport, we'll double check that. An Aero Commander 500A with a Coal Mill Super 300 conversion, that means it's got the TSIO 520 engines on board this aircraft, so larger than stock engines experienced a fuel exhaustion event and subsequent forced landing to a major roadway terrain near Dayton, Nevada. The pilot, remember, um, a lot of these are translated by folks where English is not their first language. The pilot and two passengers were not injured and the aircraft was not damaged. And here's a picture of the aircraft on the side of Highway 50 looking towards the west with the aircraft landing uh, to the east. Note also the number one engine is feathered and the number two engine is not, and no damage. Looking at the Flight Radar 24 data, it looks like a little over a two and a half hour flight taking off at 4.31 in the afternoon from Carson City Airport with a very high density altitude with these hot temperatures here. Uh, and then it looks like they did uh, went right up the Highway 50 summit to South Lake Tahoe for a Lake Tahoe tour at about 9,500 feet or so, then down over the Desolation Wilderness area on this side of Lake Tahoe, then across the Sierras over to Pyramid Lake, the home of the giant Lahontan cutthroat trout, and then down to the Silver Springs Airport here in Nevada for a whole series of touch and goes before returning to the Carson City Airport, where at about 5,000 feet MSL, the number one or left engine failed and was feathered and the right engine began to sputter and it was quickly diagnosed that they were running out of fuel and so the fateful decision was made to land on Highway 50 doing a quick 180 degree turn. Now most of you on this channel are old enough to remember the famous air show act put on by Bob Hoover in his Shrike Commander featuring a dual engine flame out landing but not just any old dual engine flame out landing. This video comes from Mark Chaloy. This is the 1996 performance at the Reno National Championship Air Races. And I've watched these performances every year where Bob comes in, shuts down both engines, feathers them. Of course, this is preceded by a high speed dive to get a bunch of energy to do this whole series of maneuvers. Does a complete loop, both engines failed, feathered, and this is at Reno at high density altitudes, very close to where this incident happened. He'll come out of the loop and he's gonna keep both engines feathered this entire routine all the way to the landing. Then he comes up and does a point roll. Still both engines feathered. Now he'll make a left base end to land on the taxiway right here at the Reno National Championship Air Races. So there he is in the left base turn. Pretty quick, he'll lower the gear. He's got the landing assured. Gear comes down. Just flying on the feathered edge is what he called this. Dissipating the last of the energy using no flaps and then he'll come in for a one wheel landing on the downwind side. The winds are coming from his right to left. Boom. Right in front of the air show crowd, both engines feathered. <laughs> then he'll settle down on both mains and then he'll 
pull off the taxiway and roll right up to the stage, air show center stage, right up to Danny Glisham there in the announcer stand, park the aircraft, and step out with that famous straw hat of his and wave to the crowd. Just a fantastic performance we got to watch year after year in a stone stock Aero Commander aircraft flying on the feathered edge with Bob Hoover. That was the 1996 performance. Now back to our story at hand. In the left seat of the aircraft at the time of this incident was the owner of the aircraft who was selling or in the process of selling the aircraft to a new owner. And so in the left seat of the aircraft was the previous owner and flying the aircraft and performing the landing. He has owned this aircraft for about six years. In the right seat of the aircraft is the new owner and they are doing a demonstration flight of the aircraft before they are to ferry it back to the east uh, coast or east uh, eastern part of the United States. And in the passenger seat is the wife of the new owner. Now, just as a rough reference, these TSIO 520 engines, they'll burn about 26 gallons each per hour on takeoff. And uh, at cruise, they'll burn about 16 gallons of gas per hour per engine at cruise. So according to the PIC, the original owner of this aircraft in the uh, left seat, he took on 70 gallons of fuel at Carson City and the JPI showed 110 gallons of fuel, the JPI being the onboard engine monitor and fuel monitor gauge and the analog gauge the old original fuel gauge on the aircraft showed 90 gallons so already you have a little bit of a discrepancy which is not too uncommon when you're mixing matching uh, newer JPI instrumentation with older analog gauges remember old analog gauges only need to be accurate one time and that's when they read empty but that apparently didn't happen in this case Here's an example of a JPI fuel totalizer. It's got a fuel flow transducer so it can measure the fuel flow and give you a, a fairly accurate readout on how much fuel has been burned. The temperature at the time that it took off was 80 degrees Fahrenheit and the density altitude was 6,700 feet. And they talk about flying over Lake Tahoe and Pyramid Lake. And, uh, and then on their way back, after doing a series of touch and goes and heading back to Carson City, the pilot said that the JPI, the newer digital gauge, showed 40 minutes of fuel left and the analog gauge showed 30 gallons of fuel left. Then the left engine died, feathered it, ox pumps on, and the pilot explained that he had two options to make. Either one, continue on to Carson City and risk losing the number two engine or the second engine. Uh, over the populated area of Carson City or make the fateful decision with the uh, other engine beginning to sputter to just do a forced landing on the highway right down there to their right. So they elected to go for the highway landing. And as they were making the highway landing with the left engine feathered and the right engine sputtering, running out of fuel, they quickly diagnosed that the situation was uh, fuel exhaustion. Um, as they were lining up to land here on Highway 50, which is a pretty wide one, two, three, four lane or greater width highway, the cars simply yielded and got out of their way. They just parted just enough to make the forced landing on the highway. And fortunately there were no wires or signs for them to hit. And let's take a closer look at Google Maps at what the landing zone looked like and came to a successful conclusion and a full stop landing right here and then <laughs> the police and everybody else showed up and they quickly analyzed the situation as fuel exhaustion they went back and forth trying to decide well should we just fill up the aircraft and can we get permission from the nevada highway patrol to just take off from here and they kind of went back and forth on that <laughs> discussion and then it was finally decided no you got to tow the airplane so they towed the airplane some 12 or 15 miles all the way back to the silver springs airport where they filled the aircraft up with fuel and continued to fly back to Carson City uneventfully. So looking at Google Maps, they were doing the touch and goes here at Silver Springs Airport by Lahontan Reservoir, right parallel to Highway 50. Then they were following along Highway 50 to the return flight to Carson City located right here. The engine failed right about in this area. Let's get a read on that elevation of that terrain there. 
They're at five. Oh man, they're at five thousand feet MSL, and the terrain right there is only forty-eight hundred feet. And the aircraft came to a full stop right here at Pradera Road, elevation about forty-four hundred feet. Coming in from the west, landing to the east. So here's what it looks like on the final bit of the rollout. There's that log pile. So you got one, two, three, four, five lanes wide with a good shoulder. There's a set of power lines paralleling the Highway 50 right here, a high embankment off to the left, and a series of light poles ahead. There are no light poles in this section of the road where he touched down back over here. So a great section of road. <laughs> Thankfully, all the traffic parted out of their way. So an important lesson for all of us to remember, always take off with full tanks, never trust your fuel gauges. And another point too, and I've noticed this in the 310, that when I'm operating in high density altitude, hot temperatures like this, I'm burning more fuel than normal because the aircraft, the engines are having to work harder to maintain the same performance that you're used to seeing when the temperatures are cooler. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.